Right, so we're talking something very interesting today. Heritage Day and La Bola. It is an intrinsic part of getting married for many South Africans. But the question we're discussing this morning, is it a traditional or legal process? That's an interesting one. Here to take us forward on this conversation, we've got John Manike, who's the head of financial education at Old Mutual. John, it is so good to see you and you look amazing. Thank you. And uh, it's always uh, great to come here. Yeah. Thanks for, for dressing and embracing your heritage. I, we were joking off air and saying, I'm sure your colleagues are looking and saying, John, is that, is that really you? Yeah. No, no. <laughs> maybe they think that's my twin brother. No, you should dress like that all the time. You should do it all the time. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk Lebola and let's talk the law. Yes. Um, are they intertwined with one another? Yes, they are. Uh, I, I think it's very important for people to understand that Lobola itself is not marriage. It is part of a traditional and legal process of getting married. Um, the, the, the law that governs customary uh, marriage is called the Recognition of Customary Marriages Act. And it actually stipulates what needs to happen. So in other words, for a customary marriage to actually be concluded or to be legal or to be valid, the, the couples must have, firstly, they must have concluded Lobola negotiations. It must be a, a marriage between um, prospective spouses above 18. But more importantly, they must have celebrated uh, that customary marriage in accordance with uh, the customs. Okay. You know, so in South Africa, we have different ethnic groups. So you must celebrate according to the customs and the rituals that are performed by your relevant um, ethnic group. And until that moment... It is not legal. Yeah. So you've got, there's the labola mm. and then the celebrations. 100%. So, so the celebration um, could, could be done differently depending on, on, you know, given the diversity of cultures that we have. So the celebration includes things like the song and dance, the welcoming of Makoti, uh, the exchange of blankets and gifts, you know, umembe, so, uh, you know, or tabela mahadi. Those things must take place. If you have not celebrated in accordance with the customs, you have not concluded that. The other thing that's important to mention is the registration of their marriage with the Department of Home Affairs. Okay. But it doesn't mean that if you have not registered the customary marriage with Home Affairs that it is invalid. However, uh, it, it is essential because it will help you in the future, you know, to solve many challenges that may present themselves. But remember, a marriage um, talks to your property rights. It talks to your, your, your access to your, the joint estate of that particular marriage. So if you don't have a legal document or contract, you find it very difficult to, to enforce your legal rights. So, so that's, that's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an important aspect to remember in all of this. So mm. I mean, you may go through the labola, you may go through the, mm. the, the ceremony and all the traditions, but if you do not write this and register your marriage mm. with home affairs, mm it may not actually be recognized by the state. Yeah, so, and but that's the, where the problem comes in. Yeah, look, there are instances where couples have not necessarily registered their customary marriage with home affairs, but as I said, it does not render it invalid. Uh, but it does help you when you've got a, a legal contract, a document from home affairs that you know, has solemnized your marriage, um, because, if, because that is one thing that you can be able to use to prove that you are, you are married. Yeah. But... But the, the biggest challenge here is that many couples would, would pay lobola and they will, they will take a long break, you know, because there's an assumption that the biggest part of the, the marriage has been concluded by simply paying lobola but, uh, and then neglecting to, to actually celebrate. And, you know, and it's very important to ensure that your marriage is built on a solid foundation because if the foundation of your marriage is not solid, legally speaking, that's where you have issues. For example, if your partner decides to leave you yeah. because they've met someone who's slimmer, <laughs> younger, you have serious <laughs> problems. How are you going to enforce your rights? Or in the event of a death of your spouse, you know, how do you uh, have yourself recognized as a surviving spouse unless you have concluded the marriage legally? All right. Now, I want to talk about something that mm. set social media a buzz recently. Yes. And that was, I think it was on a, on a, on a drama series on Mzanti Magic, or was called uh, The Queen. Mm. Or, or, yeah, where they were talking about getting a refund for Lobola. <laughs> Okay. Now, everybody asking the question, yeah. can you get a refund? <laughs> Unfortunately, no. No, no you can't. You, you can't get a, a, a refund once. I mean, uh, you, you know, it's, it, I know, it's dangerous to say, but you've already uh, tasted the milk. Ketile, ketile. hundred yeah, percent. You know, so you can't <laughs> ask for a refund. And I think the other funny thing now that you say that is that remember in the olden d uh, days, you know, people used to exchange kettles because then, the, you know, it was the primary source of wealth and, uh, you know, a medium of exchange. 
Now, these days, people don't bring cattle when there's global negotiations. Because people live in suburbs, they live in townships, you know, but they, there is a cash equivalent of a cattle, you know. And I won't be surprised, Leon, in future if, uh, you know, our young ones are going to pay global via EFT, wow. you know, because, <laughs> because That's how we society in. evolves. Because what is important is the principle of exchanging uh, the, the, you know, gifts and the bride price. Yeah. So, so tradition and legality are... It's, it's a very difficult thing to mix. It really is. Because you'd think that, okay, you're getting divorced. You want, mm. to, you want to get that back. But then again, I'm going to bring it back to simplicity and saying, you know, mm. when I got engaged, my husband came and gave me mm. an engagement ring. Yes. Now, you know, if we break off mm. our marriage, do mm. I give him back his ring, the ring? I mean, he's not entitled to it. Mm. So, you know, mm. I can keep it, I suppose. And maybe yeah. it works in the same way. Yeah. But, but mixing tradition mm. and the law. Yeah. Where are we with that? Because, you know, inherently the law mm. and, and tradition, I mean, we celebrate Heritage Day. Mm. And yet, do we celebrate it enough in principle, on paper, when it comes to yeah. saying, you know, this is what happens. But then, of course, you go to a court of law and they don't really recognize it. Well, look, the, the lawmakers uh, recognize the, the wealth and of our heritage. Um, and so when they were defining... Uh, this particular piece of law, which is the Recognition of Customary uh, Marriages Act. So they took into account those customs. That's why uh, it states very clearly, Section 3 of that Act states clearly that you must have concluded Lobola and you, you, it must be celebrated in accordance to your caste because the lawmakers were, were ensuring that we, we harness and embrace this heritage um, that we have. So that's why it's important to, yes, re, you know, follow through with the tradition because it was not tradition to just pay lobola and end and, and things there. The tradition required that you actually transfer the bride, incorporate the bride, welcome the bride, exchange gifts and celebrate because that how, that's how it was done. So if you have not done that and you've just concluded lobola, it, it means technically you have the same status as, as cohabiting partners. Yeah, yeah. Mm. You know, so, uh, one of my producers asked me a question. You mentioned mm. that it may go to a point where we actually do an EFT for Lobola. <laughs> I mean, I, you joke about it, but, mm. you know, there's no joke in that. That may yeah. very well be what will happen. But mm. now you have proof of payment. Mm. There you've got, a, a, you've got an actual sum of money that yes. has a value to it. Yes. I mean, surely you can argue this one now. No, 100 percent. I mean, uh, again, uh, you know, people sometimes ask, uh, but, but how do you prove that you've celebrated? I mean, it's simple. I mean, when the celebration, you take pictures, you post on Instagram, on Facebook. Those pictures, uh, you know, they are evidence, you yeah. know, that actually there has been a, a celebration. And, and if there's any dispute on you and, um, and, and you present that as evidence, the courts would certainly look at those things. And of course, there are witnesses and people were part of of that particular celebration. Yeah. Look, I mean, let's let's sort of maybe put put the the, the heritage side of things uh, to one side and talk about the fact that as as men and, and women enter into sort of a marriage, I mean, it is important that you sort of you go and sign contracts, whether yes. it be uh, in community of property or anti-nuptial contract, especially if you own your own assets like property before marriage. What do you recommend is the best route to go? Well, in this country, there are three laws in which marriages can be formed. So one is the uh, Marriages Act of 1961, and then there's a Civil Unions Act, and then there's a, the Recognition of Customary uh, Marriages Act. But there's also a matrimonial property systems where you can be married in commuter property and out of commu uh, commuter property. I must hasten to add as well that uh, customary marriage amounts to in commuter property. So in a property system where you decide to separate your assets, where you're saying, you know, let's get married, but we want to separate assets. So you can marry uh, with an antinatural contract without accrual. That means your debts and you, rather your assets and liabilities belong to you uh, and you and you alone. But if we're saying in commuter property, it means it's a joint estate and we share. And these things are important because these days when you marry someone and, and the, you say you're marrying someone who's over indebted, they come with a five million debt yeah. and you decide to marry an in commuter property, it means you now own half of that debt as much as you would have owned half of the assets if the person was wealthy. So it's also very important these days to inquire from your prospective partner who's proposing marriage. Uh, you know, what is his uh, credit profile? I mean, what is his debt status? You know, remember, Elian, in those days um, when, when people were, wanted to take their relationship to the next level, you could actually ask that you go for HIV test. 
What stops you from asking for a person's credit report before you get married? So you decide, are you marrying in commuter property or out of commuter property? Of course, there are other things that you need to take into account. You have children and other things, you know, um, that needs to be taken into account yeah. to ensure that there's no crisis or confusion. Uh, in the event of death. Yeah. Absolutely. Marriage is a wonderful thing, but it is at the end of the day sometimes, besides the love, it is a business transaction. And you've mm. got to look at it that way sometimes, because this is for life, mm. and this is your livelihood as well that you've got to look after. Thank you for talking to mm. us. And uh, some of the valuable information. We've had a wonderful, wonderful response from Twitter. So good to see you uh, watching the program. And also, I'll try and read some of them to you. John Manike is the head of financial education at mm. Old Mutual, talking about the legal rights of customary or traditional marriages such as labola negotiation can you get a refund the answer in simple terms no it's <laughs>